Download complete. Initiate playback. Playback. <laughs> Enjoy the show. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Me Time Gamer here, bringing you another episode of the Me Time Gamer podcast, episode twenty-two for the week of what the hell week is it? Is it J- the July thirteenth or July fourteenth? Whatever week this week, uh, yeah, episode twenty-one. Hopefully, everybody's going well. I'm going fantastic as always. Hopefully, you guys have had an amazing week uh, filled with gaming experience and a lot of other stuff you do usually the week uh, besides gaming and your personal life. Uh, hopefully everybody's going well. Already asked that question. I'm going fantastic. Uh, yeah, so 21. Sorry, I'm going kind of slow today. I'm trying to read, uh, trying to not forget uh, what to mention in the podcast. Anyway, that doesn't matter. So uh, yeah, hopefully you guys are ready for another episode of the Me Time Gamer podcast. Hopefully you guys are enjoying the format. If you don't, if you don't know uh, what the format is, of course, of course, I will be talking in a couple of seconds. But uh, yeah, before I start the podcast, though, I'll be just a quick mention. Of course, if you want to uh, follow me everywhere, you can do so at Me Time Gamer. All over the social media spheres, Twitter, Twitch, Facebook, Instagram, and of course on YouTube. And of course, if, if you want to listen, if you're watching, if you're listening to the podcast, you can also listen to the video version where I add videos of subjects I'm talking about when I'm talking about the news games that I've played, uh, the kickstarting it, which is something I do at the end, and other stuff like that. And besides that, we'll go, I'll, if you're new to the show, of course, if you're listening to the YouTube version, you can find the podcast everywhere uh, where you usually find podcasts on Stitcher, iTunes, uh, uh, TuneIn, uh, what else did I mention? Uh, there's a couple, anywhere you can find podcasts, my podcast is pretty much there, so definitely go check that out. Uh, so though, if, you don't, if you're new to the podcast, of course, the, the way I structure my show quick rundown usually i'm going to be for i start off talking by what i've been playing for the last week since the last time i've made the podcast the last episode of the podcast then we drop right into the news talking about the biggest stories i found interesting during the week and of course then i i move on to kickstarting it that's a small little segment i will explain once i get there basically just promoting kickstarter or indiegogo game and stuff like that and of course then we end the, the podcast of course so without further ado let's jump onto what i've been playing so I've been playing uh, not a lot of games. I've been continuing my playthrough of Life is Strange. Believe me, episode 4 gets heavier by the second. It already starts off when episode 3 ends. It's pretty heavy at episode 3. Then that the event from episode 3 carries on to episode 4. And it just gets heavier than that, of course. I, I don't think if you're watching the video format, you're probably not seeing what actually happens. I don't want to ruin it if you ha- guys haven't seen the first couple of episodes. Of course, go over at youtube.com for slash gamer where you can find the entire playthrough there. I'm only missing episode 5, with, which I'm hoping I should be posting next week sometime. Hoping. But yeah, uh, episode 3, something major happens at the end. And then after that, you go into episode 4, dealing with that for most of uh, for the... I would say a good uh, 30, 30 to 45 minutes, or let's say a little less than 30 minutes uh, of, of the first part first part of the episode 4, then it, it moves on to something else, and then at the end of episode 4, it's a real kick in the knee right there at the end there. And uh, yeah, also what I've started playing is Until Dawn, now Until Dawn, Until Dawn is a game I've wanted to play for a long time now. It's a very underappreciated game, I find. Uh, it, it, a lot of people like the game, but uh, for some reason it didn't get the attention it deserved. And honestly, when I started playing the game, I honestly had a, so much fun time. I'm not done yet, of course. I think I'm only into it for two hours, three out, four hours, maybe. Not sure, but I've been taking my time. The only complaint I really have about the game so far is that the camera is a bit weird on it. Like, it, it's, it reminds me a bit of, uh, the, like, uh, Resident Evil HD, well, the, the first Resident Evil, where you go into the room, but it actually, but Until Dawn lets you play with the camera just a tiny bit, just to, just to, like, to make you see, like, you, uh, like, just to adjust the camera, just left and back and forth and stuff like that. Which is very weird, because not, not a lot of games do that nowadays, and it's, it's it's something to get used to, but it does add to dramatic effect of the game itself. 
And uh, I think that's pretty much all the two... Yeah, those are pretty much the two games I've been playing since last week. Hopefully we'll get stuff moving. There's a couple other games coming out this week. Couple of demos, betas, and stuff like that. That I hopefully have a chance to try out in the upcoming week. But, but besides that, that's all I've been playing. So let's drop right into the news. Alright, so our first article of news... It's a bit weird news for, uh, it's not usually stuff I like to cover, but actually this week's pretty, let's say pretty weak in news. And first, it's a, uh, first article of news come from, comes from Kutaku, and it's written by Jita Jackson. Uh, and, uh, basically this is just a weird thing that Nintendo did once, once again, shouldn't be surprised. Basically, uh, uh, the title of the article says, look at this bad Mario puzzle. So I'll probably be putting an image up on the video format of this. And, uh, basically what it is, it's a, it's a thousand piece puzzle that Nintendo released by, uh, which company here? It's $10, but so it's not expensive. Uh, can't find any article who made it, who made the puzzle game, but basically the puzzle, if you, if you're, if you're only listening to the audio, audio format of the podcast, uh, definitely go look it out. The puzzle is literally uh, a thousand pieces and it's um, basically mostly red. There's only red on the puzzle. <laughs> So uh, it's not it's it's a pretty I would say honestly it's a pretty weird puzzle like you're a thousand pieces and it's mostly red like basically you got Mario all the way, all the way to the right taken I would say uh, one third of the puzzle and then it says uh, Super Mario on the front and then after that it's just all red from there <laughs> pretty much uh, pretty much I would say one of the laziest puzzle I've ever seen of course it seems more like a like Nintendo just trying to grab money from from the consumers again just a uh, Oh look, a new a new Mario thing you can play with and stuff like that, and it's, it's basically a thousand piece red puzzle, which uh, anybody with a little bit of imagination could have come out with something better than that. But uh, it's a bit weird. I wouldn't not, uh, even if it's just ten dollars. It's kind of weird that they would release products like without putting any thought into it. It's it's, it's a basic and it's a basic Mario pose with a basic generic Mario title, and that's about it. It's it's very weird. But anyway. We'll move on from that. There's just a little little thing that caught my attention. I was really, I was laughing, laughing by myself, and I had to show my wife after that, and then she started laughing. It was funny. So we'll move on to the next article. We'll, not, we'll we'll move on from this dumb little puzzle. Next little article is of news that which is somewhat game related. I find it still important since it's a, uh, it's it's still part of the gaming community type thing. Uh, this article of news, which is a site I don't usually go to, is uh, CNET. Uh, and this article is written by Sean Hollister. And basically, the title of the uh, article is as follows: Logitech buys headset maker Astro Gaming. So, if you guys are um, big onto PC gaming or st- Twitch streaming and stuff like that, you'll know that uh, headsets are very important when you're playing games, of course. Uh, and the article goes as follows: uh, Logitech, one of the best-known brand of keyboards, mice, and headphone and webcams, uh, were whether Okay, that's ex- sorry. Let me re- let me restart that. I didn't read it properly. <laughs> Logitech is one of the be- uh, best known brand of keyboard, mice, headphone, and webcam. Where, whether you're a gamer or not. Now, Logitech's carving a deeper niche in the gaming peripheral market by purchasing headset maker Astro Gaming for 85 million dollars in an all all cash deal. Okay, that's pretty that's pretty big. Uh, while you could technically call Astro Gaming a rival, as both companies produce headset. Astro is best known for its pricey, high-quality Astro A40s and A50s headset, which seems a lot of people have those headsets. Kind of weird. Uh, I, I've it's it's weird that I personally never hear people talking like Astro Gaming is. They're like a they seem to be like a mainstream headset that everybody buys, but nobody says necessarily that's it's one of the best headsets out there. Like the ones I'm using right now are Logitech's um, their uh, 430s. C430s, which are actually pretty pretty nice. They're pretty basic, but they're for they're fucking they're a hundred dollars and they work pretty good. Anyway, let's continue the article. Uh, uh, pricey, high quality Astro A40s, A50 headsets, uh, which retail upwards two hundred and fifty dollars. Whereas Logitech's highest end headset originally cost two hundred, can be had for closer to one hundred thirty dollars US. Yeah, Conver- converted to blah blah blah. Article fo- continues as follows. According to the press release, Logitech has a pretty specific specific aim by buying Astro. It wants to expand its product line into the game console market. Uh, while some of its gear can technically be used with console, Logitech has mostly targeted PC, tablets, phone as of late. Uh, and then they have a small quote from the, the press release. 
Uh, with the addition of Astro, we're investing in an uh, adjacent gaming market, the console gaming market, to help accelerate the long-term growth of our gaming business. Uh, okay, and then the article keeps going as follow. It's not the first time Lacha has expanded by swallowing another peripheral company. It became a major player in, in the Bluetooth speakers and at some degree headphones after purchasing Ult Ultimate Ears for $34 million in 2008 and nabbing wireless headbuds like Jaybird for $50 million last April and acquired flight stick maker Saytech from the wreckage of rival Mad Cats in 2016. Alright, so yeah, the article continues like that. There is an update. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, okay, they will and uh, there is an update as f from 4.27 p.m. Uh, Pacific time. It says that uh, uh, Astro and Logitech Gaming will stay separate brands with separate teams. Okay, so they're not combining the teams get it to, together. There'll be still two different brands uh, out there. So yeah, that, that that's that's kind of a weird news that came out of nowhere. It's uh, Logitech is actually a new brand that I want to try before I was using mostly um, tri Triton headsets made by Mad Cats. And uh, I, I, I bought their latest one and I really wasn't impressed by the fitting and how shitty that the, some of the speakers sounded and i bought the the logitech uh, c430s and i was actually really impressed with the headset itself so logitech is one of those companies to it is a big maker lot like it's weird because i remember logitech back in the day logitech was was always seemed like one of those smaller no-name brands for me well back in back like five six years ago when they the i think they started off not too long five six years i'm not 100 percent sure on that but anyway uh the Logitech became such a big company in the in the streaming and gaming business on PC, and uh, I guess that's a good move for them. They'll be able to in encapsulate more of the P console gaming and stuff like that because Astro is a big name, like Astro, Triton. Uh, they have so many, so many more comp uh, oriented uh, uh, fucking stuff for the the, the consoles. Sorry, I lost my train of thought there. And um, Logitech is very good, like very well known for their keyboard and mouse. Uh, so we'll have to see what keeps going from there. Hopefully that's going to be a fruitful decision on their part. Uh, it's going to give them wings in the console uh, space and uh, go higher. Maybe they can exchange uh, exchange uh, quality uh, and specs and stuff like that and make even better headsets together for the PC and the console market. And yeah, so let's move on to the little another article of news this one's a bit bigger uh this one came out last week uh this one is from i'm reading an article from ign.com and it's written by alex gilyadoff sorry if i read that wrong i probably butchered it title goes as followed singer suing bethesda over use of his music in repugnant fallout 4 commercial now this is already like five years old uh this uh, thing but i'll keep reading the article before i get put my opinion so the article starts as follows. Folk singer, songwriter Dion uh, Dimuki is suing Bethesda over a Fallout 4 commercial that contains what he calls uh, repugnant and morally indefensible images. Uh, Dimuki's uh, The Wanderer was used in a, f in a Fallout 4 commercial with the same name. You can view, okay, you can see the they have a trailer there, which I will include in the video format of the podcast. Uh, rep uh, PC Gaming N reports... Nimuki has an, had an agreement with record label UMG Recordings to allow any of his songs to be licensed for advertising, but claims it included a clause that meant that singer, the singer had to personally approve any commercial that used his music. Nimuki says, sorry if I'm butchering his name, says that Bethesda never reached out to him. Nimuki uh, found the commercial object objectionable because of it, it featured repeated homicide in a dark dystopian landscape where violence is a glorified as sport. As a result, the musician believed that the ad damages the image. Uh, the killing and physical violence were not to protect innocent life, but instead were repugnant and morally indefensible images designed to appeal to young con consumers, the lawsuit read. And then the article continues a bit more. The singer's suit claims that it Given the right of your refusal by Bethesda, the Mutant could either have blocked the use of the song, renegotiated for a higher fee, or convinced the company to tell the story of a post-apocalyptic struggle for the survival without craven violence. And then after that, uh, the Mutant is now asking for $1 million to pay for potential loss in incomes and damage to his reputation. 
Now, this is a lot, a lot to unpack. I had, I had like, I had a fucking whirlwind of things in my head going on and I had time to think about it a bit more. And I have to say, this is a bit weird because this is coming, like, the trailer came out two years ago. I don't know where he's been for two years that he couldn't find the trailer and the use of this song. And honestly, if, I don't know why he would say that the, the, the trailer ruined the meaning of it, like, uh, his image or anything like that. First off, I didn't know, uh, personally, I didn't even know the song was made by him. So, and second, I feel like the, the song makes the trailer. That's what makes the vibe of the trailer be so, so good in the first place. Now we'll have to see. I did. We'll have to see in future updates of the news or other podcasts talking about this that uh, what's going to happen with it because it is. I don't know if it's too late for him two years after um, for to see like if if he has any suit like a lawsuit. If the lawsuit will have gain uh, gain in the end. It's a bit weird suing a company two years later when your song when that trailer is not even commercialized anymore. It's not even well. I'm assuming in some places it rarely passes on, maybe on TV still, but the trailer is not publicly, probably not that much seen anymore. Sorry, I'm having a hard time talking today for some reason. Uh, and honestly, it's it's super weird. Two years later, uh, I don't know, it's, it's, it's a bit weird when you're... Because this song, like he did explain in another article I read uh, last week, that it, the song like it's supposed to mean like like he mentions a bit lower that it's the struggle of the character of the wandering on his own and stuff like that and he wasn't happy the way the song the song the 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 video portrays the song it's something like that which is a bit like i said it's a bit weird but uh, we'll have to see in the future what's going to happen there, there hasn't been any update from that I don't think bethesda has responded uh to the um to the lawsuit as of yet so we'll have to see in the future hopefully this can all be swept under the rug or you just get the compensation i feel like i don't know it's i don't want to i don't want to be like attacking or anything like that but I, i feel like this is i don't know like i don't i feel like this is like the 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 musician maybe he might be struggling and he wants he wants money of some kind and he's trying oh here's an, i'll try and make a quick bug because it doesn't fit my morality of what i wanted of this song or stuff like that because come on two years later if you, you would have caught this you would have caught the trailer anybody there's so many people that watch this trailer let, let me let, let's go quickly on youtube sorry i'm gonna let's go quickly on youtube to see how many views the trailer has so can quickly check that out uh this is not brought to you by uh fallout <laughs> uh the one let's uh fallout for trailer uh the wanderer all right uh let's just go to the official one if i can find it uh that's bethesda playstation so the playstation the the let me find it so basically, uh, PlayStation released like re- put that trailer on their YouTube channel. That one has 200,000 views on it. But I want to go to the official one. Uh, so many remakes of it, people reacting to it. So there's the Bethesda right here. Oh, I think it's been privatized, so I can't. I guess because of the lawsuit, they had to privatize the video. So that's a that's unfortunate. But the Uh, the one on PlayStation is at 200 something views, so hopefully they're able to resolve that little um, that little dispute there without having uh, to lose that song because it does add so much to that trailer itself. So I will be uh, uploading the trailer on the YouTube uh, format so you guys can check it out. There won't be the song playing, of course. So so let's move on to the last little piece of news I have for you guys, and it's about Destiny 2's open beta. So I do have an article in front of me, but I. I, I wanted to give you guys what the detail about the beta itself. So basically, uh, on the if you go on the PS, I'm looking at look on the PS4. Uh, there's a beta uh, download. Uh, be, uh, sorry, there's a beta download um, page. But if you haven't purchased the game, you can't download just yet. So I'm assuming we're uh, if you haven't purchased the uh, pre-ordered the game, you're only going to be able to download it. Uh, the same day that the open beta begins. So basically, on the Fallout, um, sorry, on the Destiny 2 beta pay- download page on the PS4, 
uh, the, art, the, the description goes as follows. Welcome to Destiny 2 Open Beta, a small taste of what you'll find in the final experience on September 6th, which is the release date of the game. Uh, PS4 pre-orders early access opens beta begins uh, uh, July 18th at 10, 10 a.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time, which is uh, 1, 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, then after that, you have uh, the free open beta begins on uh, the 21st of July and then ends on the beta ends for everybody on July 23rd at 9 p.m. So uh, min midnight uh, Eastern Standard Eastern Standard Time. Uh, sorry, I have a lot of problem talking today. Let me take a sip of my drink here. Rehydrate my uh, my throat. Uh, there's a addendum here. Let me just double check. Oh, I need to use my PS4 controller for that one. So yeah, so if you you the open beta, the early access pre-order or open beta begins on the 18th, finishes on the 20th. Then you can jump right into the 21st to the 23rd to play the open beta. So basically, on the download page, you can find some uh, features. So some of the features you'll get with the open beta. Uh, play the opening story mission of the cinematic campaign. Take the take on the enemy threat in a three-player cooperative strike. Put your competitive multiplayer skills to the test against other in 4v4 matches. Uh, fight solo alongside your friends and or match make with other guardians. Then it says at the end there, the Destiny 2 open beta does not represent final code. Player may experience bugs and incomplete features. So yeah, that's going to be, that's the details for uh, Destiny 2 Open Beta. Hopefully you guys are going to be ready for next week. I think it's on, let me double check my calendar here. Uh, so all free, so on the 18th. So beginning Tuesday of next week, if you if you pre-order Destiny 2, you're going to be able to play the beta, the open beta of uh, Destiny and then on the 21st, uh, the free open beta for everybody. So I definitely will be trying out. Hopefully you can check that out on YouTube. And if you're on YouTube, you're probably looking at the uh, trailer for Destiny 2 Beta. I think there's a trailer for it. Yeah, there is. <laughs> I'll be posting that. Was there uh, Kotaku, no, Polygon, that I'm reading the article, written by Samit Sakar. Sorry if I butchered that name. I'm extremely sorry. Uh, there's, let's see if I can find more information. Yeah, I already mentioned if you pre... Re-download it. Download the beta tomorrow. Apparently, here they says the article preload time apply both the uh, beta will be live. Oh, uh, the spokesperson also confirmed that the preload time applies to both PS4 and Xbox One. Even though the beta will go live a day earlier on PS4, there is no word on download size yet. When does the uh, Okay, this one too. Sorry, I'm just trying to read through it quickly. Anyway, yeah, that's that's pretty much. Uh, but also did a three star class review. But. All right, so yeah, that's pretty much it. There's not much else for the beta news. Uh, so you guys get ready for that next week. Uh, last time I played Destiny was so long ago. I played like a month after it got released, and I really enjoyed it back then. Then it lost as a pill. I personally lost a pill in it or interest in it when other games came out. I just felt like I didn't feel like going back to the grinding. I know there's so many DLCs that I wanted that came out after that and expansions and stuff like that. And I, I don't know, I just for me, it was hard to go back. But I know the Destiny community is a very big community. Uh, it's, it's a game that actually very surprised me because at the beginning, a lot of people were giving the game shit. But as soon as a lot of stuff started came out, like the Vault, uh, not the Vault of Glass. Well, the Vault of Glass and then there was the Trials. Uh, there were so many other content after that. Uh, so yeah, it definitely it definitely uh, has a lot to offer to you, and that's gonna be it for uh, this week in the news, and we'll move on to kickstarting it. I'm Mr. Meeseeks. Look at me. All right. So if you're new to the podcast and you don't know what kickstarting is, basically it's a part of the show where I, I reach into the internet uh, in the in the world of the kickstarters and and the Indiegogos, and I find a game that's being posted on those websites and promote it to you guys so you guys can definitely go help out the cause for those games, donate, uh, p become a patron or whatever, uh, Indiegogo's name is a backer or whatever, and uh, definitely go check them out uh, if you feel interested. Of course, if you're, if you're listening to the audio format, I'll be uh, showing the trailer for the game. Uh, the game I'm going to be talking about is Bravo 867. 
So this is still an early concept game. The game's only coming out in 2019, but they are requiring um, a funding for it now. So basically, the game is this, uh, the little splurge at the, at the under the title. It says, a side-scrolling stealth game based on gathering intelligence. So I'm, I'm usually a big fan of uh, stealth game. So basically, right now, the, uh, the game has accumulated $248 Canadian, pledged out of $40,000. Uh, so that's from six backers, and there's still 20, 26 days to go. So there's still a lot of time left on the project. Uh, so it finishes on August 9th. So you guys definitely... I'll leave a link in, of course, if, uh, if you're watching the video format, there's a link below to the project. And there's also, if you're if you're at metimegamer.com, on the post, for the, um, the post for the podcast, you will see a link below uh, in the kickstarting it section. And let's read a bit of what the game is. So... So, uh, get ready over the next two years, watch us as we unfold the next generation in gaming with the creation of our 3D platforms, platform side-scroller called Bravo 867. Lose yourself in a self-based missions. Each level will take you on a journey of different scenarios where you are an operative in an underground intelligent agency in control of your AI agent, Bravo 867, to infiltrate and secure information about illegal practices within secured walls. Phase 1 of Bravo 869 will take you through the first 9 levels when we launch. Level 1 is already completed, complete and our team is aggressively working on level 2. Gamers enjoy the fact that there are multiple possible scenarios throughout each level to give the game replay ability to different challenges. So I, uh, so the game beta test is due for uh, fall 2018 and roll the full game i guess comes out at fall 2019 so there's not much more to say about the game itself there's a all the other information is on the kickstarter so i'll leave it link in the description below either from the post on metimegamer.com or from the youtube page to the kickstarting project and so you guys can definitely go check it out and support it All right, guys, that's going to be it for today's episode of the Me Time Gamer Podcast. Episode 22 is a wrap. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Of course, I really appreciate you guys come in here. If you're new, thank you so much for uh, listening or watching the first episode of the Me Time Gamer Podcast. Uh, of course, if you're returning, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. And of course, I'd like to thank also uh, to the, the music from the intro and the outro music by Technoax. You guys can definitely check them out on uh, YouTube. I'll leave a link, of course. There's always a link in the description of all my videos I do, and of course in the post at metimegamer.com. There's also a link to the to the to the uh, YouTube page, and uh, what else? Also, there's background music. Usually, I'll leave those in the descript in the uh, description. I don't know what's the background music while I'm recording, so I usually add that after. And of course, if you want to follow me everywhere, you can do so on social media at metime using uh, metimegamer everywhere: uh, Twitter, Twitch, Facebook, Instagram, and of course on YouTube. Uh, what else? What else? What else? Um, oh yeah, uh, you can also check me out at patreoncom slash gamer where you can support the podcast for three dollars. But you're not just supporting the podcast; you're supporting the videos, the Twitch stream for upgrading my equipment, better quality sounding, uh, better videos, uh, better better editing, of course. Because if I buy a new PC, I can edit faster, better. I can spend more time instead of waiting for my my stuff to load. I can actually do editing. <laughs> which always helps a bit faster uh, it, I, I, then it, I'm more willing to edit better, take more time to edit because I'm not wasting time just waiting for the game to load or, or the, the process and stuff like that you can also uh, what else, what else, you can also email me if you have any comments, concern, anything you want to you wanna comment read on the podcast if you can do it so by sending by sending me a message at podcast at metimegamer.com I will definitely try to get back into you. If you just want to, you want to, you want me to put my opinion on something, definitely leave, leave, you can do that there. Of course, if you would like to sponsor the podcast, sponsor the podcast, you can do so by sending me a message at contact at metimegamer.com. And I think that's going to be it. Am I forgetting anything? I always forget something at the end. 
I wrote, I wrote it down what I need to, to hit, but no, I think I'm pretty good. So, of course, if you're watching the video format, of course, like the video and subscribe to the channel. We really enjoy that. Of course, if you're listening to the iTunes formats or any other podcatcher, please rate and review the podcast. That great, greatly helps and gets the podcast out there to other people who listen to it. And, of course, uh, tell me if you actually leave a review. Tell me stuff I can, I can change to make it better. Uh, of course, being a mumbling moron, I, I'm trying my best. That's just me being me <laughs> when I'm tired or not, or uh, I'm getting a sore throat from talking too long and alone. Because you notice I'm alone <laughs> doing this podcast. If you made it this far, uh, you already know this already. But anyway, and that's going to be it, guys. Thank you so much, guys, for watching or listening to the po- to the podcast or video, video for more format. Jesus Christ. <laughs> All right, never mind. Uh, thank you so much, guys, for watching and listening, and I will catch you on the next uh, next podcast episode. Keep on keeping on.